Hi everyone, this is Evan from First Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 3506 Yeti. So far, they have had a great season with making finalists at UNC Asheville in match 13 at Mecklenburg. And today we'll be looking at their really cool robot. There's definitely a lot of sheet metal on this. All of their full with intake, their pivot and shooter. All this looks really unique compared to all the other teams. And we'll be looking at this, their vision system, and everything that went into this on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Start off, I'll pass to Pavin to talk a little bit more about the strategy and design that went into making this. Yeah, so um, as Evan said, we are a uh, handoff design. So we start with our ground intake here. Um, it's a full width intake, um, and you can see the little vectoring pieces here. Um, initially, it wasn't a full width intake. Um, it was just about the size, width of the note. But um, after district events, we realized that um, we don't want there to be any chance of us, you know, kind of hitting the note away, kind of like an air hockey puck. So we just went full width. Um, also, we really kind of loaded up on the, the metal parts here because we really want to make it sturdy. Um, when you're going full speed at the source, you know, you don't want to be worried about that intake breaking or hitting a stage pillar. So we have this huge crash bar here. And then we also have these metal side plates here. Um, and I'm happy to say that throughout this entire season, um, our, our intake has never broken or bent. So um, it's pretty good. Um, and as, as a driver, I'm pretty rough on it, but um, it's really it's really held up. Then we kind of have like this, uh, I guess you could call it a note cage. Um, these actually help vector the uh, intake. We have little 3 8 rod that kind of spin. So the note comes in and kind of adjusts itself in. Then we've got a beam brake at the back to tell us when it's fully in. Um, and then it compresses itself a little bit, uh, the note. And then it pivots up. Um, it's taking some time because of the brake mode plus our custom gearbox. Um, but we pivot the intake up um, to our shooter up here, um, which is a vertical flywheel design. Um, we have two staging rollers, and then we have two little custom 3D printed um, McConnell wheels that kind of help center the um, note as it transitions to the shooter. Uh, also, we've got beam brakes here um, that help us help the staging stop right before it hits the flywheels. So the flywheels have ample time to speed up, um, but the note comes in and then it transitions to the shooter. And then our pivot also um, pivots to whatever angle we need. Um, and that's fully uh, using April tags. And um, we have a, a pretty decent range and we can even shoot while moving slowly. Um, and we have this just a static plate on the bottom for the note to sit on and hold it steady. Um, and if I can get the shooter up here, so it's a pretty large gearbox under there that the um, shooter pivots on. The reason we had such a high reduction is we wanted really, really incremental um, adjustability for the angle. Um, so the more we reduce it, the more um, fine tuning we can get. I mean, we were even tuning to like a uh, uh, tenth of a degree. So um, also having these custom gearboxes, both of our intake gearbox and our pivot gearbox that um, we designed, it allows us to put our absolute encoders on the final drive um, instead of relying on the inbuilt encoders. Since the encoder, this, these gears actually don't um, aren't part of the gearbox, but they're just for the encoder. So the encoder actually gets the final drive of the Spline XL, and that's the actual real position of our shooter at that moment. And that avoids all the backlash within the system. Um, same thing with our intake. We also have another absolute encoder right here, again, on the final drive of the intake, so we can get that um, perfect value every time. We've got the uh, horizontal battery here, um, and it's just good for weight distribution, having a linear elevator in the back, having the battery here and flat kind of keeps our COG low and us balanced. And what? how do you score AMP? Because I know you guys have the elevator for it. Yeah, so um, with AMP, we just uh, instead, we send our note into the um, shooter, and then instead of pivoting, we oh, extend our elevator. Yeah, again, I'm not winning against a Kraken on brake mode, but um, we're going to demonstrate it, and we just extend our elevator and then we pivot our shooter down so we can shoot directly into the amp, um, which makes our amp cycling fast as well. Awesome. Um, Gonna pass over to Rich to talk a little bit more about the controls and programming that went into yeah. this. So uh, on this robot, we have a collection of sensors. As Pavin said before, we have our beam brakes in the intake and um, on the pivot. 
and that allows us to know where the game piece is in our robot at all times. Um, we're able to use this, for example, we have a limelight here. We signal to our drivers through flashing the limelight when we have a game piece in our intake, so they know that they can drive back and hand off the game piece as fast as possible. Um, in addition, we do have a limelight. Uh, we use uh, a new feature for the limelight called Mega Tag, and that basically takes um, the robot's pose based on a collection of all of the April tags that it can see on the field. Um, and from this, you've been able to get really, really, really accurate poses. Um, and it's really helped us, especially in our alignment and our uh, pivot angling and shooting. So when we uh, want to shoot, we just auto align to the speaker and then our pivot um, pivots to the uh, correct angle and our flywheel spin up to the right speed so that we can get that perfect shot. Um, in addition, we use this stuff for amp as well. We're able to uh, we're able to um, adjust our pivot based on the absolute encoders that are in here um, so that we're able to get an angle so perfect for the amp that it doesn't even hit any, any of the amp plates. It goes straight through into the ramp. Awesome, and there's a lot of degrees on freedom, degrees of freedom on this robot for sure. How much time did it take you to tune all of this in? Um, so we got the robot pretty late. Um, we also had a, a later competition, our first comp was week three. So um, it took us about two to three weeks to get it comp ready so that we can actually run out of competition. But ever since that comp, we've been iterating. As our robots change, so is our code. Um, and we've definitely got it to its best state yet. Uh, we've recently added like our auto lining, our shoot on the move, um, mm -hmm. and things like that. So that allows us to perform as best as possible. Awesome. I can definitely tell you guys have done a lot of iteration on here. This is Behind the Bumpers for Team 3506. They have had a great robot, super unique compared to the other teams here in NC. And I wish you guys the best of luck at, at this year's DCMP. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.